Hello, 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 hello. Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to Equip the Destiny Church, where we are equipping you for destiny. How you doing today? My name is Bishop Eddie Gross, and I am so glad that you are with me today. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I just hope and pray that uh, you have had a wonderful week. I pray that all has gone well with you. I pray that you have just walked in the, bun the abundance of God's blessings uh, all week. And uh, we just want to just say, first of all, uh, how, uh, I mean, just how wonderful it is to be with you again. <clears throat> I know that we've missed us because we've missed you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And for you who don't know, uh, my wife and I have had the, uh, the privilege of actually making a transition. And so uh, we've transitioned from Atlanta to Georgia. We are now here in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. And so we just thank God for our new seasons, for new territories and new opportunities. And so uh, we thank you for being patient with us uh, in our absence. And so uh, we are back. And so uh, if you were not with us on Thursday night uh, for our wonderful Bible study, hey, listen, you don't want to miss this. Uh, we are in the midst of a, a beginning of a study of the book of Acts. And so you definitely do not want to miss that. So meet us on Thursday nights at 730 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can get that information in our closed Facebook group. And so, again, I just I'm just so wonderful. I'm just so wonderfully uh, pleased to be with you. Uh, and uh, I just want to thank God. Amen. For what he's doing uh, in the midst of uh, in the midst of this uh, this this moment and in this time. This is a wonderful, wonderful time to be in the in the uh, in the faith and so I just want to encourage your hearts today let not your heart be troubled and that's what we're going to talk about today amen let not your heart be troubled you believe in God also believe in Jesus Christ all right so we have we have today uh, we're starting a series three-part series called uh, believing God for greater uh, believing God uh, for greater and and so uh, this series is going to be about challenging us uh, in terms of our ability, our capacity to believe God uh, for greater. Can you say man to this? And so I believe that God wants to see greater in our lives. I believe that God wants us to be uh, fruitful and even more fruitful. As he says in John chapter 15, he says, every branch that abideth in me, he said, bears fruit. And then the father prunes it that it may be what more fruitful. And so we understand that God wants to bring abundance of fruit of our, out of our lives. He wants to see greater. He wants to use us for greater. He wants to use you for greater. He wants increase in your life. Amen. For the benefit of the kingdom. He wants us to make a greater impact in community. He wants us to affect lives of people in a greater capacity. He wants to see us bring more people into the household of God. Amen. He is a God of greater. I hope you can say amen to that. And so this series, the intention of this series is to create a thirst and a hunger in us that we may begin to believe God for greater. I don't know about you, uh, but I sense that, amen, praise God, that I'm in the midst of a season where God is doing some incredible things. I don't understand it all. I don't know it all and don't have it all figured out. But what I do know, amen, praise God, according to Romans, amen, chapter eight, verse number 28, that all things work together for the what? Good of them who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. I am believing God for greater. What about you today? No matter where you are, no matter where you sit across the length and breadth of this great nation, across the across this globe, I want you to know today, I want you to declare it in your spirit that God is calling you to greater. Can you say amen to that? All right. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the word of the Lord. I want to uh, call your attention to the gospel of John. Amen. Praise God. The gospel of John. And we're going to read uh, a few verses here. Uh, gospel of John chapter 14. Gospel of John chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 12 through 14. Gospel of John chapter 14 verses 12 through uh, 14. I'm reading from the New King James, maybe reading from some other translation, but we will arrive at the same destination. And so thus reads the word of the Lord. The Bible declares, uh, he says, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. 
and greater works. Oh my God, there it is. Greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do that the father may be glorified in the son. Verse number 14, if you ask anything in my name, he says, I will do it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you even right now. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for your word, for you declared that man should not live by bread alone. But by every word, every word, every logos, every rhema that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And Father God, we stand even now ready to receive your word. Meet us, O oh God, at our place of expectation. Meet us, O oh God, in our place of anticipation. Meet us, O oh God, in our place of expectation, O oh Lord, that we believe that you're going to feed us today as only you can. By your word, by your grace, by your power, by your spirit. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let us say amen. All right. So I want to talk to you today. Amen. Uh, um, as uh, 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 sermon number one in this three part sermon, I want to talk to you today about increasing your capacity to believe, increasing your capacity to believe. Can I say that again? Increasing your capacity. Somebody say capacity. I want you to understand today that you're only going to be able to receive or to see that from God, which you have the capacity to believe. Can you say amen to this? I don't know who this is trying to call me at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. But just let me turn this off. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we're only going to be able to believe or to be able to see God move in the capacity of our ability to amen. Praise God. Uh, believe. And so we're going to start in this dealing with our capacity. So I want to bring your uh, attention to the text. And before I get into the meat of the scripture, I just need to give you some background because I think it's very, very important for us to understand the context about which verses uh, 12 through 14 is written. Is that okay? All right. So Jesus opens, opens John chapter 14 with a discourse, with a dialogue addressing the heart of the matter as it relates to his disciples. Now, he, he, he begins by saying, he says, let not your heart be troubled, but if you believe in God, also believe in me. He says, in my father's house, there's many mansions. He said, if it was not so, he said, I would have told you. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. All right. So he tells them this, amen, in the advent of uh, his going to Calvary. I want to say from the outset, that what Jesus is saying to them is stretching them. Can you say man to this? It's stretching their belief because they, they don't really understand and they don't really have the capacity in to wrap their minds around the totality of what Jesus is saying to them. And so he says, not let your heart be troubled. Now, in this John chapter 14, if you get an opportunity, I think you need to go back and read this chapter in its entirety. But in the beginning verses of John chapter 14, Jesus makes two assertions. Uh, the first assertion that he makes is that he says that without God, no one can have access or get to or go to the father except by him. That's the first assertion he makes. Uh, he says, Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And because we don't know where you're going, we don't know how to get there. And Jesus makes this statement. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the what? Life. No one, no man, nobody goes to the Father, what? Except through him. Amen. Praise God. What an awesome statement of exclusivity that we cannot reach the Father without the Son. Can you say man to this? Jesus makes a second assertion. He says that without the Son, no one can know the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. So after Jesus makes this statement, Philip is confounded. And Philip says, Lord, show us the Father and it will be sufficient for me. In other words, Philip says, OK, but just show me the Father. If you can show me the Father, man, that will settle this thing in my mind. I think I, could, I think I could wrap my mind around this. If you could just show me the Father. And Jesus says to Philip, Philip, have I been with you so long? Come on, talk to me, somebody. He says, have I been with you so long, yet you do not know me? He says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Oh my God, can you say amen to this? And so Jesus is making an assertion, two things. He said, one, you can't get to the Father without Jesus. You can't know the Father without him. And so it's on the backdrop that he gives this he gives this information that 
stretches their ability to believe. At the heart of the matter, what Jesus is really dealing with is their unbelief. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. And so after he says this, oh my God, after he lays this weighty assertion upon him, he says, believe in me. That's what he says to, 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 to the disciples. Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father is what in me. And a sense, he makes the he makes the claim, he makes the awesome and clear declaration that he and the Father are one. Oh my God! Oh, preach it! And so then, so then he says, and then he says, watch this now. He says, and if you're not gonna believe me for that reason, he says, then believe me for the works themselves. In other words, he says, my works are sufficient. Evidence that I am who I said I am. I wish I had time today. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61 said, For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And the word says, Amen, that in Luke, Amen, that Jesus went to the temple at the time of prayer and they gave to him, Amen, the scroll where uh, it was found, the book of Isaiah. The scripture said he turned to that very uh, chapter. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61 and read what he says for the spirit of the Lord is upon me for his anointed me. Amen. To preach the good news of the gospel, to heal the blind and the open blind. And the scripture says after he said that he sat out. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I wish you could just meet me today. Amen. And then then when John had his moment of confusion. When John the Baptist, amen, had his moment of question, the scripture says he, he sent his disciples to Jesus and said, are you the coming one or shall we look, uh, shall we look for another? And the scripture said Jesus, amen, was healing the infirm, that opening blinded eyes and healing the sick and turned to John's disciples and said, go tell John. <laughs> Amen. That blinded eyes is open. Amen. And that deaf ears is unstopped. And that the lame walk. In other words, he's declaring by his works he is who he says he is. Oh my God. Oh, I feel like preaching today. And so, and so having said all of that, Jesus really could have dropped the mic, man. He 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 really could have just left it right there. He could have left it right there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. You can't know the Father except you know me. And you know that I am who I said I am because my works declare, amen, that I am truly indeed uh, Emmanuel, the Messiah, the coming one. And it would seem as though that would have been enough, y'all. It, see, it seemed that he had stretched their belief enough. Oh, but then he goes to verse number 12. And that's where I want us to pick up today. He goes to verse number 12 and he says, most assuredly, I say to you that he who believes in me. Amen. The works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do because I go to my father. Oh, my God. Do you hear what he said? He said, because we believe in him, he said, the worst that he do, we going to do. And he said, in fact, we're going to do them in greater capacity because he goes to the father. And it's on the backdrop of this that I want to start this series, because when he said greater, something leaped in my spirit. Greater works. He says, I, I, he said, I, I've given you the truth of who I am. He said, now let me press you even more. Let me, he said, let me challenge you even more. Let me challenge you even deeper. And I believe today, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ, God is pressing us today. He's stretching us today. Will we believe him for greater? Will we settle on what we know? Will we just rest on what he's done? Will we just, will we just settle into this law of just existing? Or will we believe him for greater? Can you say amen to this? Amen. And I believe that God wants to do greater in the lives of his believers. I believe that God wants to do greater works through us. I believe that God wants us to make a greater impact in communities. I believe that God wants to see a greater measure of souls saved and people delivered. I believe that God wants to see a greater measure, amen, of people being healed supernaturally under the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe, amen, that God wants to turn around the impossible. I believe that God wants to take dead situations and bring them alive. I believe that God God wants to take, amen, those who are addicted to all types of addictions, amen, those who have all types of strongholds.
souls, amen, in their lives. I believe that God wants to take iniquitous sins and transgressions and set the captive free if we are willing to believe in greater. Can you say amen to this? And I believe, amen, that we will see greater <laughs> when we have the ability to believe for greater. Can I say that again? We will see greater when we have the capacity to believe him for greater. And that's what I want to deal with today. I want to challenge you in your capacity, amen, to believe God for greater. Can you say amen to this? I want to give you a principle today. You will never see greater until you can believe greater. <laughs> can you say amen to this? And when you can believe God for greater, amen, then you open, amen, the doorway of possibilities that he can do, amen, great and awesome things into your lives. And so we're going to talk today about increasing your capacity to believe. Now, I want to talk, first of all, point number one, I want to talk about Believing, I really need to deal with that word because our first point is that if we're going to see God do greater things in our lives. If we're going to increase our capacity, amen, to believe God for greater, we must first believe biblically. Can I say that again? We must believe in accordance to what the Bible says when he says believe. All right. So we live in a society and, 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 the, and the challenge with this is that we live in a society where the word believe in the, our day and time don't really mean a lot. But Jesus said, according to this text, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who what believes in me. And so and so we have a conundrum here because we live in a society, man, where, you know, we say we can say things and we, you know, we can declare things and it don't really mean anything. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Many of you are watching me by Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, that means you have a Facebook account. Well, well, we have what's called Facebook friends, but we have Facebook friends we never met. Do we never communicate with? But we call them friends nonetheless. Y'all never talk to me today. We have followers. Amen. Oh, I got, you know, I got 2,000 followers. We got people following us or we're following people we don't know nothing about. But yet we're called ourselves, what, followers. You get what I'm trying to get you to understand. And so what I'm trying to get us to see that, that we, we have this false sense of community, this false sense of fo following because in a sense the words Friend and the word follower in the context by which we live today don't mean a whole lot. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. And so now we have we call people friends that we don't talk to. Can I get an amen right there? We call people family we don't talk to. Amen. So we have taken these terms and reduced them to, to a little of nothing. They have no depth and no real context, no real meaning, because in a sense, amen, in our society, they don't mean a whole lot. And so we, we live in a world where we're connected. Come on, talk to me. But 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 the connection don't cost us anything. Can I help you today? And so those things which doesn't cost us anything, we don't value very much. And so the church has a problem in that we use the word follower of Jesus or we use the word believer in Christ. But we're using these words within the same loose context as the society in which we live. Somebody ought to say preach, Bishop. And so we need to then go back to what the word says when the Bible says believe. Can you say amen to this? And all right. And so the word believe in the Greek is pisteo. It's where we get the root word of the word pistis, which means faith. And so the word in summary means to trust and to entrust. Can I say it again? The word amen believe in the context of the Bible means to trust and to what entrust. It doesn't mean this loose, loose uh, level of believing that we use today. You know, it's like some of you all who believe that an airplane can take off in Raleigh and land in Atlanta. You believe it. You believe it in terms of a concept. Intellectually, you say, yeah, OK, y'all yeah, believe it, but you don't believe it enough to get on a plane. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. See, it's a different level of belief when you say, I believe that enough that I'm willing to go down to this ticket counter, purchase me a ticket and get on this plane, amen, and allow it to take me 30,000 feet in the air and land me in another state. See, that's a different level of belief. See, we say we believe things that we don't really put 
anything behind it. Oh, I feel like preaching today. Amen. We, we, we say we believe in things, but there's no real commitment to it because we have, we're have using the word belief, but in a context of a society that believing something doesn't mean a whole lot. Can I preach today? So the word is pisteo. It means to trust and to entrust. Let me give an example about what I mean. So when the Bible talks about believing, he's not talking about believing that there was a Jesus way back when. It's not what he means when he says believe in me. He says believe in Jesus. It doesn't mean just like, I, okay, I can agree with the storyline. I really got a problem with the story. He was born of a virgin, lived in a manger. Okay, that's good. That's not what he means. When the Bible talks about believing, let me give you a, 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 a very familiar passage of scripture. John chapter uh, three, verse number 16. Come on now, we know this. The Bible says what? For, for God so what? Loved the world that he, come on, talk to me, gave his only begotten son that whosoever what? Come on, there it is. What? Believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, then what do you mean, Bishop, by believe? You really want to know what the Bible means when it talks about believe? Back up the verses 14 and 15 of John chapter uh, 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 chapter 3. The Bible says, let me, let, me, let, me, let me break this thing down. The Bible says, as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. Let me tell you what he's talking about. He's talking about in Numbers chapter 21, when the people complained against God and against Moses, amen, and they sinned greatly against God. And the scripture says, amen, that God sent serpents among them, that those who were bitten died. And then, of course, they repented. They went to Moses and said, Moses, intercede for us and pray for us. And we repent and we're sorry. Lord, we for, Lord, forgive us. And the Bible says Moses went to the Lord and prayed for the people. And God told Moses, Moses, go make a, bra a bronze serpent and put it on a pole and lift it up among the people. And the scripture says that those who were bitten when they looked to the bronze serpent, amen, was healed and did not die. That's what he's talking about. They looked to the serpent for their very lives. If they had not looked to the bronze serpent, they would have surely died. They trusted in what God said. They trusted, amen, the lifting of the bronze serpent. And then John said in chapter 3, as the bronze servant was lifted up in the wilderness, so too shall the son of man be lifted up and that he who believes in him shall be saved. Preach. Amen. That's what he means by when he talks about believe. He means to trust. Amen. And to entrust Jesus with your very life. Amen. Not this casual acquaintance. Amen. With him. He says, no, I trust him with my very life. And that's what it means, amen, praise God, to believe. I believe, I believe. He said, amen, that whosoever shall believe in him, amen, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, amen, that if I confess with my, Lord, my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God had raised him with, from the dead, I shall be saved. Amen. He says, no one who calls upon the name of the Lord, amen, shall perish, but everyone who named the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I put my trust in that. I put my very being in that. In him I live live in him I move in him I have my being he is the very strength of my life he is a man the rock of my salvation he is my bridge over troubled waters he is a man the bomb of Gilead he is my prince of peace he is my everything and so much so until my life is hidden in him that's what it means to believe and if you're going to see greater, you're going to see God do greater things in your life. You got to come out of this passive, amen, and non-committal uh, uh, level of belief. You must come to the place where he becomes your very life. I'm encouraged. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, amen, when the three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar said to them, he said, I'm going to give you one last chance. If you bow, amen, praise God to the image. He said, I forget this whole thing. And they said, oh, King, live forever. They said, but we will not bow. 
And they made this declaration. They said, for we believe our God is able, amen, to deliver us from the fiery furnace. That's what they said. They said, we're willing to go in the fiery furnace, amen, because we believe our God is able to step in and save us to the uttermost. And then they said, that even if he don't save us from the fire, we still ain't going to bow. See, that's what it means to believe. For Christ, I live. For Christ, I move. Amen. For Christ, I have my being. Amen. Where is your life? Is your life hidden in him? Do you really believe? Is he really the source of your life? Is he really the source of your strength? Is he really the rock that holds you up? Is he the, is he your, is he your water that keeps you living? Is he the bread that keeps you, amen, from spiritual hunger? That's how, who he has to be to you. Amen. If you're going to say, I believe you, Lord, for greater in my life. Can you say amen to this? All right. Point number two. Not only do you have to believe biblically, but you got to pursue Christ through his word. If you're going to increase your ability, amen, to believe God for greater. Amen. First of all, you got listen, you got to You got to believe biblically and then you got to pursue Christ through his word. Can you say amen to this? Uh, Philippians chapter three, verse number 10 through 11. He says these words. Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Look what he says. And the fellowship of his suffering, that being conformed to his death by any means, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. That's what Paul said. Paul said, Paul said above all things, I want to know him. That word know in the Greek is genosko. It's the root of the word where we get gnosis. It means to know. Amen. The capacity to understand and to know. And so he says, Paul said, I want to know him. He's speaking of a deep and intimate knowledge of Christ that can only come through, watch this, through personal experience. Paul said, I want to know him. He says, above all things, he says, I want to know Christ. I want to know him. He said, I want to be found in him. Can you say amen to this? And, and I love that word when he says in verse uh, number nine, uh, three and nine, he says, I want to be found in him. It's almost as though Paul is saying, I want to be lost in him <laughs> so that I can be found in him. If you're going to, amen, believe God for greater capacity in your life, you got to know him. You got how, why is this important, Bishop? Let me, let me, let me take my time. So Ephesians 3 17 through 19, watch this now. Paul talks about pursuing Christ. He says that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, watch this now, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the height, amen, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and to be filled with all the fullness of God. That's what he's talking about, to pursue him. Amen. To, to, as, you, as, you, as you examine the breadth and the depth and the width of his love for you. You can't, you can't do that passively. You can't do that. Amen. Praise God every now and then. You, you can't do that. Amen. On first and third Sunday. That's a daily pursuit that I may know him and know him through his word. I want to ask you a question today. Are you pursuing Christ? Are you, are, do you have a, a hunger for his word? Do you have a thirst for the knowledge of him? Could it very well be that that emptiness that we feel, that dryness that we feel in our spirit is that spiritual hunger and that spiritual thirst that only the knowledge of Christ can quench? Oh, yeah. I tried to fill mine in a number of ways. I tried to club. I tried drinking. I tried all that I thought I could do. I could try. But I was still empty. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? I was still empty. I was still void. And only until I accepted Christ to have my aha moment. There it is. That was the very thing all my life that had been pursuing. The very thing that, that all my life that has fulfilled me. If you believe in Christ, you know what I'm talking about today. But it's to know him through his word. Amen. Why is this important? Because first of all, 
to know God's word, watch this now, is to know who God is, to know who we are in God, and to know what belongs to us, amen, because we're in God. So in other words, when we pursue God through his word, now I know what to expect. I know what to believe. I have an example of what God can do. I can stand and say, Lord, I know you're able because you show me time and time again through your word what you've been able to do. And when I look at what you've done in the word, I know my circumstance is no greater than what I've already seen you do in the word. And I believe, oh my God, I believe and I trust and entrust, oh God, that you will not let me fail and that you will step in my circumstances because your word shows me that you can. And that's what it means to pursue him, believe him and pursue him through his word. So you can't know what God can do till you have already seen what he's done. <laughs> can I say that again? See, you can't believe God until you've already seen what he can do. And that's why the importance of scripture, the Bible says our being surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, meaning he has given us examples and time and time again, how God has stepped into the circumstances of mankind and moved the mountains for his people. Can you say amen to this? And so, and so to be able to expand my capacity to believe him for more means I first of all got to know what he's capable of doing. And that's what the word says. Oh, my God, that he's capable of moving mountains. He has the power, the authority, the dunamis and the exousia. Amen. That he can do anything but fail. Can you say amen to this? Amen. Praise God. All right. Let me get another scripture. So Philippians chapter three, verse number 12. Paul says, not that I have already obtained. He says, nor am I already perfected. He said, but I press on, amen, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ and Jesus have also laid hold of me. He's talking about pursuing him, pursuing Christ through his word. Man should not live by what bread alone, but by what every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. There's a word for your circumstance. There's a word for your situation. There's encouragement, amen, for your despondency. There's encouragement, amen. There's, uh, 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 there's, there's a courage for your calamity, amen. There is a word for you. But you can only get that word as you pursue him, amen. And once you begin to see, Amen. What's possible? Can you say amen to this? One of my one of my one of my uh, uh, favorite examples, amen, of the power of God in Scripture, and I talk about this all the time, is Peter stepping out on water. I mean, I've been preaching this man went worth almost thirty years now, and I am still fascinated by that. That Peter looked out, saw Jesus on the water, and said, "Lord," he said, "Since that is you," he said, "Command me to come out on the water." And Peter, the Bible says, stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water. Now, I know what some of y'all going to say. Y'all going to say, yeah, yeah. But then he got scared and he began to say, that's true. That's true. But he did walk. And I believe that, at the, at, that if a man at the command of Jesus Christ can walk on water, that God can also command me to walk on whatever's troubling me. I believe, amen, that Peter's life was changed. And yes, he failed. And yes, he made some mistakes. And yes, amen, he had the propensity to miss it. But his life was forever changed because he did walk on the water. I want to just suggest to you today, get in God's word and see what's possible. Then take him at his word and see what God, amen, give you a testimony that will forever change your life. And he will expand our capacity to believe, amen, as we seek him through his word. Can you say amen to this? All right, point number three. And if we're going to increase our capacity to believe God for greater, we got to believe biblically. We got to pursue God through his word. And we got to view challenges as opportunities for increase. View our challenges our trials and our tribulations as opportunities to increase, amen, our capacity to believe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. I'm preaching good whether you know it or not. 
So watch this. One, there's a scripture, and I'm, I'm going to testify. There's a scripture that, that, that early man in my walk with the Lord just challenged me. I just, I tell you, I knew what it said, but I could just never really grasp the depth of what James was saying in James chapter one, verse number two. You've read it. James said, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptations. Oh my God, can I preach today? The king, the new King James said, count it all joy when you fall into various kinds of trials. I could never wrap my mind around it. How can I count it joy? Things that's bringing me tears. Can you get, can you get what I'm saying? I've always wrestled with that verse. What are you, what, what, what does that mean? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. He ain't just simply talking about your light bill do. He's talking about man, count it all joy when, 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 when life hits you with the hardest punches it can hit you with. When life hits you with disappointment. When life hits you, amen, with disease. When life hits you with death, amen. How do you count joy when life hits you, amen, with catastrophic punches, amen, that will, that, that's intended to knock the very faith out? Of you. And I did not understand it until I lived a little while longer. And then I began to understand what James meant. James said, count it all joy. In other words, he's saying he's not telling us to be joyful about this situation. He's telling us, amen, be joyful as the result of what's going to come if you allow, amen, this trial to produce something in your life. Oh, preach it. Amen. So I come to understand that in every trial, in every situation I had in my life, I had two opportunities. I had one opportunity to cry. Woe is me. Come on, y'all. Y'all look at me. Don't act. Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. There's times when the things that happen, oh, no, why this happened to me? And it seemed like things just don't never go right for me. And it seemed like every time I take one step forward, I end up taking three steps back. Things just don't go right for me. Can you been there before? That things have happened to you and you wonder, am I cursed? <laughs> Does God really love me? Amen. I've had them happen to me. I've been there. But then I come to understand that was my issue. Because I come to understand, guess what? The more you talk to people, you more you come to find out your problem ain't as bad as you thought it was. Come on, help me out here and preach somebody. Amen. Praise God. You really think you got it bad? Keep talking to people. And you'll find people who going through things, amen, far greater trying than yours. And they'll go, now tell me what your problem is. You'll go, never mind. I'm all right. I'm good. So I come to find out, guess what? Everybody going through things. Things happen to everybody. It wasn't just me. And so I changed my perspective and I stopped crying, woe is me, and start declaring that, God, I will trust you in this. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. Everything, amen, that happens in your life. Well, let me get to the scripture. You're looking at me strange. So James chapter 1, verse number 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience and let patience have her perfecting the work. In other words, every trial, every situation, every calamity, everything that happens in our lives, it is God's intention that they produce something in our lives to our benefit. No, you might not feel good going through it. Amen. But he's got a blessing for you when you come out on the other side. Can you say amen to this? And so, so here's a principle. Every trial and every trouble. It's just another opportunity to expand your capacity to believe God for greater in your life. Let me give it that to you again. It's a principle. Every trial and every trouble is just another opportunity to, to expand your capacity to believe God for greater in your life. Can you say man to this? See, that's, 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 that, that, that's what we got to come to understand as I close this sermon. See, you can't believe God for greater. Amen. If the weight of the now is taking you down. You got you to gotta be able to know. Amen. Praise God. You got to be able to believe, trust, and entrust, and know God enough through his word to know that he says, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That thou prepares before me a table before me in the presence of my enemy. That I anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
So you got to believe that in your, in your heart of hearts. And then when trials and tribulations come, see them as an opportunity to say, God, I declare I will trust you in this. No, I don't know what this is. No, this doesn't feel good. No, I don't understand it. No, I don't even want it. But I trust you in it. And if you can trust God in what you're going through now, it releases the ability within you to believe God for greater. Can you say amen to this? And that's fundamentally our problem. Because sometimes the now hits us in such a way to where it's difficult for us to believe God for greater. Oh, you're not going to talk to me today. Amen. Our now is weighing on us so heavily until it obscures our views of the possibilities of what God can do. And I just stopped by to tell you today, amen, that God wants to increase your ability to believe him. And the only way he can increase your ability to believe in him is he has to be able to put weight on you now. He's got to be able to put some weight on you now to expand your capacity of terms of what you believe he can do. And if he can get me out of this, if he can get me through this, if I can come out of this and see the glory of the hand of the Lord on my life, if I can come through that struggle and come through with a greater, amen, capacity to believe God, then I can believe him for greater. Can you say amen to this? And it's what you're going through now. That's stretching you, challenging you, expanding you, that you might be able to have the right perspective, amen, on what's possible in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I did, I challenge you today that whatever it is that you, st whatever staring in you in your face, whatever you dealing with right now, I declare, I don't care what it is. Amen. I don't care what is named. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the lawyer said. I don't care. Amen. What nobody says. Amen. I have a Christ in my life whom the Bible declares who's been given a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, that everything in heaven and earth, amen, under the earth and in between, everything that's named, every principality, every power, amen, has to bow, amen, at the name of Jesus Christ and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That's what my Bible says. Do you believe that thing that's challenged you right now? God has allowed it to expand your capacity to believe. And when he gets you through that, when he gets you through that thing, you're able to look back and then you will be able to count it joy of how God brought you through, how God brought you over, how God brought you around it. And the next thing you look at, hey man, you'll say, my heart shall not fear. Neither shall my feet fall. My God is able to keep me from falling. See, you know what I'm saying? See, see, the reason David was able to stand before Goliath because he had already faced the bear and the lion. And so you may be dealing with a bear and a lion today. And that's what you need in the season that you're in. That God will be able to put in your bosom and birth out of you a belief for greater. Can you say amen to this? I'm going home. And so scripture says, amen, watch this. The woman with the issue of blood would have never known. She would have never known the power of the hem of his garment, except she started hemorrhaging. Bartimaeus would have never known, amen, the power of Jesus' touch, except he'd be born blind. The man at the pool of Bethesda would have never known, amen, the power of Christ, amen, unless he, amen, was left there lame. And so God allows things in our lives so that he can expand our capacity to believe him for greater. And so I want to challenge you as I close. That no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, 
You stand flat footed before every trial, every tribulation, every calamity, every problem, every chaos. Amen. Uh, money messed up, marriage messed up, health messed up, whatever it is. I declare that if you will stand before it and declare that you are believing God for greater for that circumstance. Watch God move. Because that's what he promised us in his word. He said that whatever we ask, and we're going to get to this because I want to take my time. Amen. This scripture. But he says, whatever he said, if we believe in him, he said, the works that he does, we would do and greater works shall we do to the glory of the father. And then he said, that whatever you ask in my name, he said that which I will do. When you have the ability to believe God for greater, for his glory, he'll show up in your circumstance. Can you say man to this? All right. Listen, God bless you. My name is Bishop Eddie Gross. I am the senior founding pastor of Equip for Destiny Church, a church that's com a complete church, completely online. I want to thank you so much for being with us today. I want you to know that you were here today, amen, not by happenstance, but you've been with us today because of the divine providence of the Lord and that God so intended for you to hear this word today to how to increase your capacity to believe God for greater. Amen. And that if we believe him for greater, amen, we shall what? See greater. And so I just want to thank you, amen, for being with us today. Thank you for giving us opportunity to speak into your life. And uh, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, amen, if you have a need for prayer, just simply reach out to us. Send us a message here at uh, Equip for Destiny Church, our uh, 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 public page, amen. Or if you want to uh, uh, message me directly, you can. But we, we are standing in agreement with you. That God's going to show up in your life. And I'm praying that this time next week, I am asking, amen, I am seeking the God. I am asking, Lord, this time next week, Father God, bless your people in such a way that someone's going to come back next Sunday and say, Bishop, you told me last week that if I believe God for greater, God's going to show up. And I believe in that there's going to be testimonies, amen, of how have God have moved over this week. And God has got has moved in your circumstance. I want to know about it. Can you say amen to this? Listen again. God bless you. My name is Bishop Eddie Gross. Amen. God bless you for being with us. Amen. And I pray, amen, in all that you do, seek the face of the Lord. Amen. With your whole heart, with all your might, and with all your spirit. Amen. And also, do this for me. Let the, let the glow of the Lord shine upon you in such a way that other people will see it. Show an act of kindness to somebody this week. Show a smile to somebody this week. Go out of your way for somebody that you don't even know this week. Is that all right? I challenge you to do that. I challenge myself to do that. Again, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. We see you on Thursday, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our uh, 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time for our uh, uh, Bible study. We're studying the book of Acts. Uh, read chapters uh, one through three. Amen. We've got a wonderful, wonderful study that we're going to go through as we expand our understanding. Amen. Of the book of Acts. And also you can meet us back here next Sunday, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. All right. God bless Bless you. May God continue to smile upon you. May he keep you in perfect peace as I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Until we meet again, my name is Bishop Eddie Gross. I love you. All right? Bye-bye.